Hey yo, what's good everyone? Welcome to my channel, this is Mauro and today we're gonna make another reaction about the Anzac Day, Gallipoli, 1915, the Great War. Since many of you guys told me that the other video we, we checked out, it was good, it was great, but it was too... Uh, it was too, way too simplified, it was too fast, only 5 minutes, so we're gonna check out another video that is uh, slightly longer and probably will explain better this uh, episode, so it's, uh, it's always nice, I would guess, when you when you check out those videos that are like uh, 4 to 5 minutes, you know, so you, you could, could understand just a little bit and then get too much into detail, so yeah, without any further ado, let's just check it out. Oh my god, that must be the coolest intro I've ever saw. <laughs> that was amazing. The Great War of 1914 to 1918 is full of memorable campaigns and battles. But even amongst the most famous engagements, the campaign in the Gallipoli Peninsula shines through due to its unconventionality. It is widely accepted that both sides showed exemplary bravery and the Gallipoli campaign remains in history as a symbol of gallant warfare and respect between two worlds. What were the reasons for this campaign, and what happened during it? Let's find out together. We're very grateful to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. ExpressVPN is consistently faster than other yeah, VPN providers. You are able to access the internet without restrictions yeah. and can unlock content that is only available in some countries. You can securely stream or download content from anywhere on any device. Often when traveling we need to access our YouTube account, and using ExpressVPN helps keep our private information from being compromised. Just one click and all of our data going in and out of our phones or computers is encrypted and protected. How do you not purchase every sponsor that this guy will present with that voice? Oh my god! That's better than a freaking television advertisement! Oh my god! By ExpressVPN. We've used other VPN services in the past, but have found Express to be the most reliable and the most user-friendly. It's also extremely affordable. Get three months free with a one-year package, that's less than $7 a month, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Visit expressvpn.com slash kingsandgenerals to learn more. By the time of the start of the Great War, the Ottoman Empire was considered the sick man of Europe, on the decline for more than two centuries. Therefore, the Ottomans were not part of the core of either the Entente nor the Central Powers. Both sides courted the Turks, but a number of factors, including increasing investment by Germans in Turkey, historical animosity with the Russians, and the confiscation of two almost ready military ships ordered by the Ottoman Empire from Britain, persuaded the Ottomans to join the Central Powers. Symbolically, Ottoman participation in World War I began on the 27th of- Oh my god, this video is so cool! Oh my god, this is unbelievable! I don't know if I should put it bigger. No, it's okay, I think it's okay, you can, you can already see it. I usually make the big screen and myself small when I watch this kind of videos, but... Oh my god! I've watched many of these history videos. But this one, oh my god, beats them all. I like it way more like this than the animations. Oh my god, that's amazing. October go check out this channel. When a number of Russian Black Sea... Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I gotta do this. Come on, I don't want to miss any video from this channel. This is so good. Oh my god. I wonder how long will it take him to make a video like this. That's crazy. Wait, wait, let's bring it back a little bit. Oh, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Making a man. 27th of August, the confiscation of two almost ready military ships ordered by the Ottoman Empire from Britain persuaded the Ottomans to join the Central Powers. Symbolically, Ottoman participation in World War I began on the 27th of October 1914, when a number of Russian Black Sea ports were raided by two formerly German warships, Goben and Breslau, which were given to the Ottomans and attacked under the Ottoman flag. The participation of the Ottoman Empire had a significant effect on World War I. 
The Ottomans forced Russia to divert some of its forces from its western borders fighting Germany and Austria-Hungary to the Caucasus front. While Britain and France had to allocate troops to fight the Ottomans in the Middle East. Furthermore, the Ottoman Empire was blockading supply routes from Britain and France to Russia since it controlled the Dardanelles and Bosporus. Hope for a quick victory was lost by late 1914. The Western Front was in a stalemate, and the Entente was looking to gain an advantage elsewhere. On January 2nd, 1915, the Grand Duke Nicholas of Russia requested that Britain help them against the Ottomans, who confronted the Russians in the Caucasus. Britain and France started planning a campaign against Turkey, with an aim to take control of the Dardanelles, gain a direct supply route to Russia, and devastate the Ottomans. The first step was to gain a foothold in the Gallipoli Peninsula. Britain's War Minister, Lord Kitchener, appointed General Sir Ian Hamilton to command the Mediterranean Expeditionary Forces. Troops from the Australian Imperial Force and New Zealand Expeditionary Force, the so-called Anzac Corps, and the French Orient Expeditionary Corps were also part of the Gallipoli Campaign, among the 15 Allied divisions in total. The Allies did not expect strong opposition from the Ottoman army, as its military reputation was particularly tarnished after the recent defeats to Italy and the Balkan states. The first Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, was the initiator of the Gallipoli campaign, and he believed that 50,000 men would be enough to defeat the Ottomans. Lord Kitchener concluded that 70,000 troops would be necessary for a victory in Gallipoli. So Leaders of the Greek army advised the British army about the necessity to have 150,000 men for a victory. This was arrogantly ignored by the British. Hamilton's plan was to land in the south of the Gallipoli Peninsula at Cape Helles and settle Bahia, move to the north, defeat the Turks and clear their batteries on the shores of the peninsula, and allow the navy to move through the straits towards Istanbul. The Ottomans defended the Straits with the 5th Army, which at the beginning of the campaign consisted of five divisions. In all, 16 divisions took part in the Gallipoli campaign on the Ottoman side. The 5th Army was commanded by German General Limon von Sanders. Another prominent military commander in charge of the Ottoman defence was Lieutenant Colonel Mustafa Kemal, a future founding father of the Turkish Republic. The Turkish and German commanders agreed that holding the high ground on the ridges of the peninsula was the best way to stop the Allies. They were unsure about the possible shores for the landing, therefore the Ottoman forces were divided into three. The 19th Division under Mustafa Kemal and the 9th Division were placed at Cape Helles. Two divisions were at Bulaeir in the north of the peninsula protecting communication lines, the rest were stationed inland as a reserve. A major part of the campaign was the naval attack planned by the Allies. Since the Ottoman navy was considered very weak, the Allies decided to send their older warships to Gallipoli and keep the modern warships for a possible naval confrontation with the Germans in the North Sea. On the 18th of March 1915, the Allied fleet, consisting of 18 battleships, numerous cruisers, destroyers and submarines, attacked the Dardanelles Straits. The Ottomans were planning to defend using shore batteries and sea mines. In theory, the Allied minesweepers were supposed to clean the straits from mines under supporting fire from the rest of the navy. But the Allies were so overconfident that they ignored this conventional tactic. Some of their warships were as close to the shore as one mile. This made them an easy target for the Ottoman shore batteries. British battleships HMS Irresistible and HMS Ocean were lost, and HMS Inflexible was badly damaged. The French lost the battleship Bouvet with 600 of its crew. These losses forced Admiral de Robeck to fall back and regroup. This defeat was devastating for the Allies, and a huge boost to the morale of the Ottomans. On the morning of the 25th of April, the Allies landed in two different parts of the peninsula. 
the Australians and New Zealanders landed at what has become known as the Anzac Cove, further north than they expected due to navigational errors. The goal of this landing was to advance inland and secure higher ground on Sari Bayir and to cut off the Ottoman troops in Kilit Bahir. The Ottomans did not expect a landing there, therefore only two companies were defending this beach. While this force was not enough to stop the Anzacs, unfavourable rocky terrain and Ottoman forces on the high ground inflicted significant damage. Anzac forces lost 2,000 men on the day of the landing and were not able to achieve any notable progress. They were ordered to dig in close to the shore. The second group landed at Hellas Cove. 29th Division landed on five different beaches named S, V, W, X and Y. At Y Beach, the first Battle of Krithia took place, and the Allies made significant progress but were not able to exploit the advantages of their position due to a lack of orders. The Ottoman 25th Regiment prevented them from advancing any further. At W Beach, the Lancashires lost 60% of their forces due to the Ottomans resisting their landing. The common theme of the landings on the 25th of April was that the Allies failed to exploit their advantages and continue advancing due to lack of orders. Instead, they decided to dig in on the shores, which proved to be counterproductive. On the 27th of April, the Ottoman 19th Division and part of the 5th Division counterattacked the Allies at Anzac Cove, but were repulsed with the support of naval gunfire. On the following day, the Allies tried to take the village of Krithia, but the Ottomans were able to stop the 29th Division halfway from Hellas to Krithia after inflicting 3,000 casualties. The arrival of the Ottoman reinforcements to Gallipoli proved that the Entente failed to act swiftly and the confrontation was going to turn into a war of attrition. On the 30th of April, Mustafa Kemal attacked at Hellas and Anzac Cove and managed to break through the French sector, but had to stop under massive amounts of machine gun fire. The Anzacs counterattacked on the next day, but were repulsed by the Ottomans after a little progress. The Ottomans were dependent on artillery fire from high ground on the peninsula to repulse the Allied attacks. It was of utmost importance for the Allies to take control of these high grounds for the success of the Gallipoli campaign. On the 6th of May, 20,000 Allied men were sent to capture Krithia and the strategic high ground at Ashibaba. The Allies advanced after heavy artillery preparation and for two days a fierce battle ensued, but they failed to capture either of the targets. On the 19th of May, 42,000 Ottoman troops aimed to take the 17,000 Anzacs by surprise and drive them into the sea. But the surprise failed since on the previous day, the Ottoman preparations were seen by a British aircraft. The fighting went on until early June, when after 13,000 casualties, the Ottomans decreased the intensity of the attack and the lines consolidated. The final major engagement started on the 4th of June, when the Allies attacked Krithia and Ashibaba again with the 29th Division, Royal Naval Division, 42nd Division and two French divisions. This attack was stopped as well and led to another period of trench warfare. Hamilton's request for an additional 95,000 troops to secure success at Gallipoli was rejected since another offensive on the Western Front was planned. Bulgaria's entry into the war on the side of the Central Powers made the situation for the Allies even more precarious. The decision to evacuate troops was made. First, in September, three divisions were moved from Gallipoli to Salonika. Despite gloomy predictions, the Allies were able to safely evacuate the majority of their troops by the end of the year. Both sides lost 56,000 people in this short but bloody campaign. The Entente failed due to a lack of coordination, difficult terrain, insufficient planning, the spread of diseases, overconfidence and spirited resistance by the Ottomans. 
As a result of this campaign, the confidence of the Ottomans greatly increased, and they managed a victory in Kut al Amara in 1916 against the British. The attempt by the Entente to support Russia and lighten their military burden failed, which can be considered as one of the reasons behind the eventual revolution and the defeat of Russia. Britain and France continued prioritizing the Western Front, despite bloody and indecisive trench warfare. Churchill resigned from the government and volunteered for active service as a lieutenant colonel on the Western Front. The disaster in Gallipoli was also one of the factors behind the fall of the Asquith cabinet. The war continued for three more years. We are planning to continue our series on modern warfare, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel wow. and have pressed the bell button. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters and channel members who make the creation of our videos possible. Now you That's amazing. That's that was truly amazing. Wow. That was explained so well and the graphics of the video that was so beautiful. It was so entertaining. Wow. It was explained so well. I wish all the videos will explain history like uh, this channel does. That was re really amazing. And yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, uh, that's you it filled some gaps in this uh, in this uh, how to say in this uh, battle that uh, took place in uh, Turkey in 1915 and uh, yeah I want to learn more though <laughs> I want to learn more I still have uh, still, there's still many things that I don't understand so please if you can recommend me some books uh, or some movies uh, I think I think before someone recommended me in the comment section a movie about the uh, Gallipoli battle I'm not sure I'm not sure so if you have any movies or documentaries I will watch by myself, I'm not gonna make any more reactions. I've already done two reactions on this topic, so that's enough. I will just uh, read a book or watch a movie, watch another documentary, maybe longer, to understand better what happened that year. So yeah, this was very cool. Hope you've enjoyed this reaction. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Also subscribe to this channel because it's amazing. We're gonna make uh, plenty more reactions from this channel, I guarantee you that. So if you have any more requests on uh, future reactions, you can type them down in the comment section and I'm gonna try to do them as soon as I can. But yeah, this is it for today. I wish you a nice weekend and I will see you next time.